so um, my two, my fluid has back primed up to that first or second line. Okay. Now, in order to get, so what's going to happen when I put this on my machine? The secondary bag is going to infuse first, and I'm going to set the pump rate at 133 milliliters per hour, and then the second, and then the primary flow is going to go back to 83 milliliters per hour. But in order for that to happen, I have to have the primary bag lower. So that's what this hook is for. And I'm going to put my primary there. Okay. And um, again, I have to make sure that I open my clamp. And there's the acronym on there. Um, what does it say? Three words. Thank you. Open my roll clamp. Okay. Make sure I've set my pump to run the secondary, and I always have to look to make sure it's dripping. And it's not dripping yet. That one's still dripping, so I have to make sure that one's going to drip before I leave. And the machine will ask you, is it dripping? Is your secondary dripping? And it didn't, um, well, I, actually, it didn't feel right when I pushed it in here, so I'm going to make sure that it didn't. probably also that my arm is high. There we go. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to make sure that that's dripping before I leave. Open all my clamps. Okay. There is a, a knob here. All the ivy poles are adjust adjustable. Okay. Um, and that's actually pretty short for me. I mean, sometimes if they're all the way up there and you're short, certainly lower it, okay? Um, so I wanted to make sure that I got my medication given in the time frame, and now I need to do my documentation. So I need to um, label my tubing and um, label my bag. So DTI is 1040, okay? There are two pieces of tape on the back. You just pull off the big one and you stick it on your bag. And um, I already DTI'd my label on my secondary. And then I have my two tubing. And they are also good for how many days or how many hours. Okay, very good. So 1, 15, 10, 30, DAW. And I pull this off and I'll wrap them around my tubing. Then I'm going to document that I gave this medication either by scanning or I'm going to sign my chart. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye on my patient. I'm going to reassess my patient. Um, keep an eye on this site. See if they get relief from the medication I'm giving or whatnot. Um, Question was, when do I use the rest of this five? Oh, okay. If I'm running a primary line, would I need to use this? No. Because this is continuously running, okay? If it was just an antibiotic and I was going to disconnect them again, I would then flush with the rest of my five after my 45 minutes was up. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay. Um, now, I, I put the arm on a table so you guys could see it. So your patients are going to be laying in bed. So you need to get in the habit because it's going to take you forever to flush and connect and we don't want to see this. Where's your patient's bed supposed to be? At, at waist level. Okay? So raise your patient's bed, connect the IV, put it back down. So make sure you're practicing in the lab. Okay? Um, so things that we want to make sure that you don't do, you can't inject any air into the patient, so always check to make sure um, that you don't have any air either in your tubing or your um, saline, okay? 
Again, we're not going to prompt you. We're just kind of a fly on the wall, making sure you do it safely. Okay? Um, Uh, so before I leave my room, I already took my gloves off. I'm going to wash my hands, okay? And um, we would never leave any medications or supplies. I would not leave the saline at the bedside. I'm going to take it with me. Um, these labels help you calculate INO. There's actually markings on there. Uh, this is a full bag, 500 milliliters. We're going to talk more about pumps in a couple weeks. And at the very end of the skill, <laughs> um, it talks about switching the IV bag, which you will probably have to do for checkoff, okay? Um, I think most of the practice ones are saline, might be some potassium. Sometimes the uh, prescriber wants some potassium or magnesium in here, and um, let's say the magnesium or potassium isn't compatible with the rosacin, you might have to change the large bag, okay? So um, get in the habit also of practicing uh, changing the sailing bag, and basically anytime you spike a bag, once you pull this out, it's gonna drain out. So always make sure you have it upside down, pull this out, you can put your new bag here and you, you get rid of this, okay? We reuse our bags, we put golf tees in here, um, you can put this cap back on here, but it's not secure. So just remember, once they're spiked, they may leak. You might want to keep it in a separate bag, okay? So uh, you'll also learn about changing the IV uh, bag. Okay. And that's the last step on page four. And then I just want to go over some things, um, you know, so that you know you'll be successful in, uh, in lab. Um, we want to make sure that you don't commit any medication errors, that you're administering the right medication with the right dose at the right time via the right route to the right patient. Um, the appropriate time frame I still have on there 15 minutes, but you know we're not sticking to that. It could be 20, 25, maybe 30, but it shouldn't be 30. But, you know, don't worry about that so much. Um, you always have to clean all of your ports properly prior to connecting. Uh, being able to calculate your infusion rates, uh, which I have problems with. Uh, your IV tubing can't touch the floor or the trash can or anything like that. So, you know, stuff happens. So you have to be responsible, recognize that it touched the floor. What would you do about that? You get a new tubing, okay? If you contaminate something, you're going to get a new pair of gloves, wash your gloves, okay? So be thinking about what happens if. Because again, I make this look very easy. All right, you guys are going to have more trouble getting air out and things like that. Um, you have to back prime. You can't lose any medication. All right. Um, you have to be able to speak um, using those terms that I used, okay, uh, using medical terminology. Uh, you need to be uh, very organized. If you violate any safety issues, you don't wear your gloves, you don't wash your hands that would be a problem. And you always need to identify your patient using two identifiers, name, date of birth. Um, you can't leave the medications, like I couldn't have left my road stuff and up here. Thankfully, I took my other one in with me. Um, and the safety things, make sure your, your bed is down when you're done, your side rails are up, your bed is locked, and your call bell is there. Okay. Um, academic dishonesty is a variant. So um, if we see any signs um, or if you commit any violations of academic dishonesty, that's an automatic, actually it's not a variance, is it a variance? Or it's, no, it's automatic um, uh, removal from the nursing program. So uh, keep it honest, keep it real, okay? We need to maintain our academic integrity. So that is the skill. Any questions?